gonna try to show you this video is fixing a problem. So earlier I mentioned uh, that we had a bent arbor. This is the arbor and this is the escape wheel. And this, if you can see the front, when this spins, you'll see it going up and down. It's not concentric. And we'll do a measurement so you can see exactly what the, what the issue is. But in a clock, uh, the train starts with a main wheel and then works its way up through different wheels. Some people would say gears, but we call them wheels. And the higher up you get, the more sensitive it is. And these things have to be perfectly concentric, basically. And if they're not, the run out will cause the clock uh, either to be very inaccurate or usually it won't even run properly. So this has to be fixed. Uh, the reason I got into this is it was my last piece of, uh, of stock. I thought maybe I could bend it, maybe I could straighten it, uh, but I can't. And it's just not right, so we're better off uh, remaking it. So I'll just try to quickly show what the problem looks like and then take through the basic steps and see if uh, we're able to make a part that uh, looks good and doesn't wobble and will end up being able to uh, work. So you can see here I've got a dial indicator uh, on the wheel. Uh, the reading here are in thousands. And as we turn this, you'll see what we've got from a runout standpoint. And we're sitting there six thousandths, maybe seven thousandths. But we want to see if we can get this thing uh, down to around a thousandths, under a thousandth. Um, because right now this would not be a uh, good running clock if the clock ran at all. Okay, so I've got a piece of stock. So the first thing is let's see what we've got to start out. And you see this, we're sitting at around a thousandths. So... As long as we can keep this this good on the lathe, we should be okay. But you can see we've got no room to play. So I've got to make sure whatever we do, we keep this piece as uh, straight as possible. So setup is going to be critical. Uh, and how we uh, do this is all lathe operation. Uh, so we'll go over there and see if we can keep this part uh, as straight as it is to start. So what we're going to do to cut this part is I've got it mounted on a shear line lathe. Uh, these lathes are very nice for doing small parts. As you can see, I've got it in a collet, um, so we can hold it uh, concentric. And we'll mark that thing so it, uh, as we move it, we keep it along the, the same uh, point on the axis. Uh, the other thing, I've got a comp compound slide on there. So we'll cut this around a one and a half degree uh, taper. Uh, but I'm going to do this in stages because the taper is too long. Um, we'll get too much flex in that part uh, as we cut it. So we'll work that along. Uh, I'll show you how we'll do that. And then once we get that taper right, um, we'll show you how we'll by hand grave um, the two places where it goes through the bearing. So we'll start at it. So for the other end, what I'm going to do is we're going to hand grave um, this arbor. And I've gotten, this takes practice, uh, but it's not uh, as difficult as I thought it would be. Um, it takes a carbide uh, graver. Um, these things need to be sharpened a lot. You need to get a diamond wheel to keep them uh, uh, nice and sharp. Uh, but you'll see it's a pretty effective tool to uh, get a fine finish. Um, and it's not that important because I'm running this through a bearing, uh, but you'll see in a normal clock arbor, you need to have that thing, a high polish, hardened finish. And these do a much better trick than you're going to get with a uh, standard tool. If we were running this in a uh, normal hole, which is just brass on hardened steel, um, that other end wouldn't have been good enough. But for a bearing, it'll work using the tool. This is the right way. Um, if you see people make clocks, you'll, you'll see this kind of technique. Uh, I'm, of course, new at it, um, so I'm learning. This won't be as good as you'll see others do, but uh, I've noticed every time I do it, it seems like I get a little bit better. So let's start. All right, so uh, let's see what we got here. So remember to run out before about six thou. 
Well, you see what we got now? That to me is right about a thousands. So if you remember at the beginning, that's what the material was. So we went through that lathe operation. Uh, meant we kept everything as concentric as uh, as we could. And I'm happy with that. You look at that part, it's running true. So we'll be able to work with that and keep going from there.